Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder. And uh, I thank you so much for joining me uh, as we spend meaningful moments with the Master's Word every day. Thank you for joining us as we continue our theme that we began on Monday, and that is the faithfulness of God. God is faithful, dependable. You can trust God to do exactly what God said God will do. Today, I want to talk to you about how God is faithful um, dealing with people who have hurt us. When people hurt us, I mean, have really hurt us. And, and there's a difference between hurting someone and harming someone. Some people harm you, but some people hurt you. What's the difference? When you harm someone, it's unintentional. You harm someone, it's unintentional. But when you hurt someone, you know what you're doing. And you, you, you didn't consider the effect or care about the effect of your actions and how it could damage someone. And in this life, we will have people to hurt us and we will hurt other people. The toxicity is not always with the other person. The toxicity is with us. We hurt people and people really hurt us, intentionally hurt us. And um, when we've been hurt, it, it it's... It sometimes it's something that can consume us, consume us. Bitterness, rage, anger. The three emotions that begin with the letter G that all of us have to wrestle with, bring resolution to, is the first G is guilt. Guilt. And guilt is the hurt or harm that we have done to ourselves. Amen. I have a book in my library called Why Is It? And I'm, he says, Why? The name of the book is Why Is It That Every Time I Take the Knife Out of My Back, My Fingerprints Are On It? That's the name of the book. Why is it that every time I take the knife out of my back, my fingerprints are on it? In other words, I have done something to sabotage, to self sabotage my happiness, guilt. And then here's another G word, three powerful emotions is grief. Guilt is what we have done to ourselves. Grief is what life has done to us. You lose a job, the economy's not working. Um, uh, you have a spell of sickness, COVID-19, uh, you contracted the disease. Well, that's life. And life can bring some troubling, painful realities that cause us to grief, to grieve. That's what life has done. But the third G word, you know what it is, is grudge. If guilt is what we have done to ourselves, and if grief is what life has done to us, then a grudge is what other people have done to us. And the question is, how do we respond when we feel a grudge towards somebody who has done something devastating to us, someone we have trusted, and they betrayed that trust? Because usually it's the people that we care the most about who hurt us the most, or we hurt the most. The closest do the mostest. So what does the Bible say to us about God's faithfulness when someone has hurt us? Well, this is what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 19. It says, dear friends, never avenge yourself, leave that to God. For he says that he will repay those who deserve it, who deserve it. And in other words, sometimes people who have hurt us, we may think they have hurt us, but it might be that they were in the right in what they did. 
maybe they disappointed us and we perceive in our minds that they didn't hurt us because we just immature. Maybe we wanted something from them and they weren't there to give us what we wanted. And we say, oh, you hurt me. I don't like you. And so we take it out on them. And God says, why are you taking it out on them? They don't deserve it. Just because we think somebody deserves our wrath does not necessarily mean that they deserve our wrath. And that is why God says, you let me repay because you may be thinking totally wrong. You may have some totally unrealistic expectations. Paul goes on to say in this verse, don't take the law into your own hands. Let me handle it. And the reason why God wants you to let God handle it is because we don't know all the facts. And then secondly, you can never be productive if you are consumed with rage and anger and a grudge towards somebody, because always remember that the person you hate controls you. They control your sleeping, they control your emotions, they control your anxiety, they're making you sick. Whoever hurt you uh, and you hate them as a result of that hate, they're the ones that are winning. And some of us have a grudge towards some people who are no longer in our life. It's 10 years ago, we have not seen them in 10 years, but we still think about them. Some of us are angry with some people and hate some people and hold a grudge towards some people who are deceased. And God is saying, look, uh, why are you letting them control you from the grave? Because whoever you hate basically controls you. It could be a, your parents. One of the powerful points of, to ponder we're going to deal with is and just going to spend a week on it is having to deal with the pains of that maybe our parents brought upon us, our disappointment and anger towards our parents and how to negotiate it, those pains. But one thing that God says about whatever is causing you to feel those pains, God says, let me handle it. Don't you avenge yourself. Let me handle it. Now, many of you will say, well, I got to handle it. I got to get them straight. I got to give them some street justice. Every dog has its day because if I don't, they've done something and I'm letting them off the hook. Look, when God says, let me handle it, you're not letting them off the hook. What you're doing is you're lifting them off your hook and you're putting them on God's hook. And God says, I know them. I know where they live. I know the social security number. I know their address. I will handle them. Because whenever you are enraged and hate people who have hurt you, then that's like drinking poison and then waiting for your hater to die and get sick. The hater doesn't get sick by your hatred. You get sick by your hatred because hatred is a cancer that hurts the container. So if you are the container of the hatred, it hurts you. The other person is not thinking about you. Your ex is going on with somebody else. They're married. They don't think you are the farthest thing from their mind. You're the one that can't get to sleep at night. You're the one that has the ulcers and the anxiety and your hair is falling out and all the other issues that are symptomatic with, uh, with the emotions of hate because we are mental body compartment compartments. We, whatever goes on in our mind will always register itself in our bodies. So when, for example, when you're depressed, you either lose weight or pick up weight. And people can tell you you're depressed because what's going on in your mind registers itself on, on, in your body. And God says, I don't want that in your mind. Let them off your hook, put them on my hook. I got this. I'm faithful. And here's the good news. The good news is this, is that many times the people who God allows to hurt you maybe have really helped you and you didn't know it. Never forget that in weight training, and I do weight training three days a week. In weight training, it is the resistance that builds muscle. So my trainer has me push against some things or put some weights behind my back and do this do up and down and it's heavy, but that which res I resist and push against, 
builds my muscles. And sometimes God allows you to push against some haters because God is developing your muscles so you can flex on the next level of life. And so sometimes your, your haters are your elevators and you have to go to Walgreens and the drugstore and get some cards and send them a thank you card to your haters and say, you know what, what you did to me Help me. You kicked me, but you didn't realize that when you kicked me, you kicked me forward. So let God handle your haters. In fact, Psalm 23, verse 5 says this that to your haters, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. In other words, that I'll bless you and prepare a smorgasbord of blessings in the presence of your enemies so that your enemies have to watch you in your new house, watch you with your new car, watch you with your new figure, watch you with, hey man, uh, with your new job promotion, watch you with your new business, watch you blow up. Back in the day, you didn't want anything to do with me. Now you're all over me. So the God will, will blow you up in the presence of your enemies. Let God handle it. So deal with your guilt, ask God, God, I'm guilty, forgive me. Deal with your grief, God, life is hard, help me. Deal with your grudge, God, I handle and hand over those who hurt me to you and God is faithful to handle it. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness uh, in the area of our hurts and those who've hurt us. And forgive us for hurting people. Thank you that you're the faithful God, that even when people kick us, they don't realize that they've just kicked us forward. You are an amazing God that we love and trust. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I appreciate you being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. And look, if you don't have a church home, you need a church home. You need a church home. I'd like to be your brother and your pastor at St. Stephen Baptist Church, but more importantly, your pastor, uh, somebody who can help you grow in your faith. So contact us, uh, newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. We'll get together on Saturday and close this tomorrow. But until then, during COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow.